Welcome to Podcast Movement Evolutions 2024. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. All right. Hi, everybody. Oh, it's so bright. <laughs> um, welcome to your first, as we call them in the biz, PodCon. Thank you. How's everybody's coffee? Is it cranking? Everybody's yeah. coffee cranking? We, we don't call them that in the biz. Actually, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Um, all right. Thank you all also for being here. Uh, I, I, my first question for you, it's going to be mostly about podcasts today. Um, this is a podcast conference. Um, you are Amy Poehler. As you, you are Jenna. Know. Yeah. Vice Berman. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not amazing at these things, but I'm <laughs> glad you're here to help. Um, star of stage and screen, and now podcasts. What made you want to do podcasts? I'm a huge fan of... Uh, I'm a big consumer of podcasts. It's probably the biggest um, like form of media that I consume, uh, specifically in the past you know, five, five to seven years. Oh, what? So, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a huge fan. These are podcast makers here, so thank you. I'm sure I'm listening to a lot of the stuff that you're making. Yeah, I, and um, so being a consumer of it and just really being interested in the places it's going and the art form, I felt like there was a space available to um, gloriously <laughs> make fun of things in, a, in an interesting way. So that's that's how I show my love. Yeah, no, it's a it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful way of showing your love, making fun of everything. Um, well, and I find it interesting that that's how you've decided to make a podcast. You could have done what I think a lot of comedians do, which is, you know, sit in their bedrooms and talk to their friends. Um, but you decided to do these, I would say, loving parodies of different kinds of podcasts. What made you want to um, do that rather than the alternative? Well, I, I listen to a lot of people who do those kind of like here was my day podcasts or, you know, or interview shows. I listen to all of them and... Um, you know, I never rule anything out in terms of a creative experience, but what I got excited about what, what we started working on together was this, um, how each form has its own set of rules. And I, um, I'm specifically really into what makes an expert, um, what, what, what does um, advice look like? And then I went down kind of a rabbit hole of couples therapy for a long time, watching shows, listening to therapists online, loving therapy in general in my life. And I just started thinking about, yeah, <laughs> I have great respect. Um, so I just started thinking about how fun it would be to play a character in a podcast. Yeah. Love it. Um, speaking of a character you play in a podcast, let's talk about doc Dr. Sheila. Thank you. You have to ask it in the, you have to say it in the form of a question. Yeah. Um, and, and, and why is that again? Well, because there's some, it, it, it's unclear as to whether <laughs> she's received that title. So just, just from, for legal reasons, just to keep everybody safe. Yeah. She... It has to be, not be a statement, but a question. Yeah. She might have no credentials at all, you're saying. But. Well, I, she would probably say, you know, wh what are credentials? Let's, <laughs> let's dig in. Yeah. And why totally. is that important to you? Yeah, say more. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, well, let's, um, Julie, <laughs> would you play uh, the Dr. Sheila trailer for those of you who have not listened to Say More with Dr. Sheila? If you haven't, you really should. It's a wonderful <laughs> show. This is world-renowned, self-proclaimed couples therapist, Dr. Sheila. And I'd like to invite all of you to experience my couples therapy podcast, Say More with Dr. Sheila. And yes, for legal reasons, you do need to say the doctor in the form of a question. On the pod, I talk to couples who are having problems and you get to listen. And how wonderful is that? To listen in on other people's problems and then feel better about your own. I ask my patients to come in, to open up, and to say more. Yeah. Doesn't that make us feel better? 
Um, so let's talk a little more about Dr. Sheila, who she is. Um, a thing that I find uh, wonderful and hilarious is that this is all improv, but you have really a very extensive kind of character sketch of who she is. I really head. feel locked in with her. Yeah. I do. I have to say, I really, really <laughs> love spending time with her. She's, she's a lot of fun. She's a boomer. Um, she's a bit older than me. Um, she has a lot of um, blind spots. Uh, she doesn't, which also I know is a term you shouldn't use anymore, and that makes Dr. Sheila mad. Um, <laughs> you know, she's collected some African masks in some countries that she shouldn't have brought back. You know, she's, <laughs> she's got some illegal antiquities in her office, I'm sure. She, uh, she's kind of one of those people that um, is very, it's just fun to play a character that is very certain and often wrong. Those two things are very fun. And then we started it because I wanted to do an improvised podcast. I wanted to do, I wanted to do stuff with my friends. And I just think that you know, for many of you out there that are making stuff, podcasts have become the new talk show. So it's kind of the place where people go to promote stuff. But I know a lot of my friends don't always want to talk about themselves. They just want to be doing something fun. It's why games on talk shows are so fun. People just want to kind of escape from telling a story, a personal story. So we just started thinking about how we could improvise with our funny friends. So, so Dr. Sheila is performing couples therapy um, and she just goes with her gut. Yeah. And she loves Shania Twain, right? She loves Shania Twain. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that up. She loves Shania Twain. She, um, I would say she probably, um, she's a victim of patriarchy, so she she tends to um, be a little more entertained by men in general. Um, <laughs> She, um, she, she's very uh, sensitive about her own status, mm -hmm. success, and she doesn't like to be challenged. Yeah. 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 Don't ask her about the doctor part of the... No. And she just gets... There, we had a really funny uh, episode one time where the great Paul Shear and June Diane Raphael played a couple. And in the very beginning, Paul's character, uh, June, June mentioned that uh, her husband didn't think Dr. Sheila's voice was very sexy. And that drove Dr. Sheila crazy. And she tortured him for the remaining episode about yeah. that. So that's the kind of stuff. She's not a good therapist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just should make that clear. Yeah. She, she's given some decent advice. Well, though. I think she gives great advice. Yeah. I mean, you know, what is, you know, what is the, what is, what makes something good, you know? But, um, <laughs> she's, she's very self-centered and I love it just because I genuinely love, um, shows that dig deep and underneath, I mean, I, it's what I listen to all the time. I'm deeply moved <laughs> by a lot of people's work. So I thought it would be fun to play around with someone who doesn't take great care. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you have a newer season out um, that is called the Chris Chapman Do-Over. Yes. So the Chris Chapman Do-Over is with the great um, Ike Barinholtz and Lisa Gilroy and Neil Casey. And that is the genre of um, people who like to cold plunge. Yeah. A lot of those. A lot of those kinds of people who... Um, you know, have a lot of hot takes and a lot to say. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I'm not quite the demo, but I'm well aware of all of these male-led podcasts where there's a lot of um, vulnerable sharing, uh, but also um, <laughs> combined with the unresearched statistics. <laughs> and so I think... I mean, I wouldn't know. I'm, a, but um, but so uh, we had a lot of fun with this because in the Chris Chapman do-over, the character of Chris has to uh, get one percent 
more female listeners to stay on the air. So he's trying. He's listening and he's learning. Yeah. I and know. Speaking of being not the demo, I don't even know if I told you this, but we put this through the Dr. Sheila feed when we put the show out. And we got a lot of comments from people who thought it was real. Yeah, uh, that's the hope, is that people think it's real. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do. I mean, I, I would love for people to be like, what is this guy talking about? Yeah, like, they were like, what is this garbage? I'm here for Dr. Sheila. <laughs> Which made me also wonder if people think Dr. Dr. Sheila is real. real. Yeah. Well, I do think Dr. Sheila is real. She is. I think that she will actually help your, your marriage. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Chris... Uh, I, I think there's a, again, I, I think it's just such a funny world where, oh, and also what I'm, uh, uh, as a huge podcast listener, I'm obsessed with the form, like the music and the ads and the way things are presented and the guests and the way each genre, I mean, I was a huge fan of documentary now, which I think is how I pitched this to you. I loved how they took on um, different genres and I think that the success of podcasts has um, you know, I, I think par parody is a way of um, punching up, and I think podcasts are so are so so uh, they're just dominating in every way. I think it's time for them to get the proper the proper fun treatment. Yeah, the takedown. Yeah. yeah, the fun takedown. The fun takedown, and I think comedy and podcasts are interesting because I scripted stuff is its own world and improvised talk is its own world and 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 but um i think we uh we wanted to we wanted to kind of play around with what it would feel like to do to live in each world so each show does and it's been a lot of work to figure out what each show needs yeah yeah um so let's play a little clip from the chris chapman do over you will hear uh you'll hear chris played by ike um, and then you'll hear one of his sidekicks, played by Lisa Gilroy. So today we have a very exciting show. We are going to be talking about something I am absolutely fascinated and a little bit scared of. Uh, that's AI. AI. American independence, y'all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That that's an AI. That's an AI. And I love it. And I'm I, honestly, I'm so I believe that America is free. It is. I've first of all, 100% free freedom of speech is like the number one thing. That's literally what my tattoo says. Um, but the AI we're going to be gabbing about is artificial intelligence AI. All right, there was Chris Chapman. Yeah, that uh, Lisa plays Chris's um, millennial um, sidekick, who's been added recently. I mean, yeah, for obvious for, reasons, he needs, obvious, the, he needs yeah. the women numbers yeah, up. Yeah, he's got to get those numbers up. Definitely. Yeah. She's incredible. Incredible. Lisa Gilroy, incredible. wow. And I cannot stress again how much that's improvised. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can tell. And so you approached Ike and basically said, I yeah. want you to... Yeah, I said, will you play this character? Because, again, I think there's a lot of room for people to play in this space and... Um, you know, I, I'm lucky to have so many talented, funny people as my friends. So I just well, and he just seems to be having the absolute best time, and he just like he really gets that character. Yeah, he locks in, and we we had um, the, the that character on an episode of Doctor Sheila, and that was really fun to go into the psyche of why uh, these type of hosts need to talk so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And what is it? Like, why don't they feel heard? And I think, I think we got to a place, which was amazing, which was <laughs> we got to a place where Chris role-played what would be his biggest nightmare, and it would be being in prison in solitary confinement without anyone being able to listen to his hot takes. <laughs> so we got there. Um, and well, let's move on to the next slide, Julie. Um, so we're going to, basically, we have these three shows now. Um, oh yeah, people just saw the, the cover for Women Talking About Murder. Yes. Yeah, not sure there are any, you know, actual comps in the world for this show, but people, <laughs> people seem to recognize some of the artwork from certain shows that are similar. Um, 
No one has heard any of this audio except us, so we're excited to be able to share a clip of it today. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Sure. One? This is uh, the great writer uh, and actor from SNL, Emily Spivey, and Liz Kukowski, and they're they're playing. Um, uh, this is like their four thousandth episode. They've been on the air for a long time. They are a true murder podcast. Um, they love they love. Uh, 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 real, you know, murder. These are, um, they love real murder. Um, this show is about their relationship, uh, and they do, they, they talk about cases. They're all, we've all made them all up and we just improvise them. Um, but, uh, in this case, this podcast is, one has gone missing. So one goes missing, um, and that's the series. Uh, and what we're going to play now is before she's gone missing. Um, it's this. Uh, every episode has a sign-off by them, and this is one of the sign-offs. Yeah. Okay. This is Joe Beth, and this is Donna. As always, never enter a basement. Don't cross state lines alone. Don't ever load something into the back seat of your car. Don't take your child to a playground. Don't let the gas guy in your house. Don't go jogging. Don't have affairs. And from today's case, never go on a cruise. Love you all. Stay indoors, my babies. That's good advice. Yeah. Good Definitely. advice. Especially the cruise part. Very excited for this to come out. I love true crime. I'm a huge fan. I've listened to a ton of true crime podcasts because I am a white woman of a certain age. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I love I love the way um, this came out, so I'm really excited. It's really fun. It comes out in May, so stick around for that. And if you're subscribed to Dr. Sheila, you'll get it automatically. You'll get it on the feed, and you'll be writing angry emails. Yeah, yeah this is not what... Yeah, you're like, this is not a therapist anymore. <laughs> not therapeutic either. Actually, the opposite. Um, let's talk about... I want to know some of your favorite podcasts, because I know oh. probably a lot of this crowd make some of them. So what's a... Wow. What's the thing is, you've been listening to? Telling your favorite podcast is like... It's very revealing. Um, it's too personal. We can move on. Well, we were talking backstage. I've, I've drifted away from some of the, you know, heavy hitters, because I've spent a lot of time with them. You know, the, you know, the This American Life, Daily, all that stuff. You're like, I get it. The world is on fire. I, I can't take it anymore. Um... Let's see, what would be in my feed right now? I love, um, I love long serial podcasts like, um, uh, you know, things that maybe you wouldn't expect for me to enjoy, but you know, the, the one about uh, Rod Blagojevich or Aaron Hernandez or um, the one about um, the porn industry, which is an incredible one that was out a couple years ago. Uh, the, oh, fuck, I should have looked at my phone before I... Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so I like those kind of big arching stories that you follow and can't wait to listen to the, the next one. Then I also enjoy My Favorite Murder. Um, I, I am a murderino. Um, I enjoy, um, Criminal, uh... Phoebe is uh, has a crazy voice. I love it. Um, I enjoy. Um, let's see. What am I listening to right now? The uh, there was a British podcast uh, that used to put me to sleep um, <laughs> called In Our Time. Oh. Anyone remember that? And it was oh, one, one cheer. Okay. Bye. It was like three of the smartest people you've ever heard talking about like you know, James Joyce, <laughs> and you'd immediately fall asleep. <laughs> um, let's see what else to, I listen to, um, Glennon Doyle's podcast. I listen to, um, uh, uh, um, um, Esther Perel. I'm obsessed with Esther. Um, I love, uh, Oh, God, what else? I'm, like, trying to look at my feed in my mind. I mean, you um, a good job. Oh, I love Poetry Unbound. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful podcast. Just a, an Irish man who reads a poem and talks about it. Right. Incredible. I listen to... Is this enough? This uh, is great, yeah. <laughs> and I do listen to... I, I, I don't enjoy... I don't enjoy comedy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but I kind of don't... I don't listen so much to the to that because it kind of feels like 
like listening to work after I get home from work. Yeah. I enjoy the darker side of podcasts, I would say. <laughs> um, but I do enjoy some of the, um, you know, like experts and voices. I'm re- My podcasts are like music. I'm really interested in the voice. Mm-hmm. It, it matters less about the subject and more about the voice. Yeah. Who's talking? So I can be interested in something, but if I'm not relating to the voice, I'm out. Yeah. Or vice versa. I can be like, sure, I'll learn about, you know, how um, fudge is made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and we actually, we had Esther Perel briefly on, on Dr. Sheila. Which yes, we had the great joy it was really fun. of doing a, doing a cross promotional. I mean, she's so, I, I love, I love couples therapists. I love you know, I, I just think it's fascinating. And I can't believe that people go on that show. Oh, my God. I can't believe people talk about their personal problems. Unbelievable. It's wild. I can't believe what people say in general on a daily basis. <laughs> How they talk about themselves. I can't believe it's shocking. Yeah. Shocking what everybody admits to. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, would Leslie Nope have had a podcast? Oh, gosh, a good question. I think she would have wanted to talk about the very boring, you know, um, mechanisms of local government. Absolutely. So I think she would have gotten very granular (laughs) and she would have probably had someone like you come and gently ask her if she could maybe just kind of speed things along. (laughs) I feel like she'd get stuck, like she'd do 10 episodes on, you know, paperwork. Yeah. She, she would have, like, 12 very dedicated listeners, I feel. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. At least. <laughs> at least 12. I know. She would. She'd have... Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a great character on Parks and Rec called Joan Calamezzo, oh. and played by, <laughs> yes, um, by the great Mo. And she would... Um, she probably would have Joan on to boost ratings, mm-hmm. like, to get <laughs> people listening, because okay. Joan knows how to do a show. Love it. Um, so I want to play in one more thing because we are trying something new, Odyssey yeah. and Paper Kite um, and Pineapple Street. Yeah. Uh, and do you want to talk a little bit about sure. it? Sure. So there's the, there's the um, advice stuff I like to make fun of and then the real advice that I'd like to be a part of. And we, Jen and I have talked a lot about this whole world of women at work and how there's... Um, I think we think maybe a missing piece, especially for young um, Gen Z and millennial women who are at work trying to figure out what that culture looks like and and where um, what to do next. So the women that run Paper Kite, uh, my production company, have a new advice show called Million Dollar Advice, and they um, take calls, real people, real calls, and give real work advice. I find that in the advice world, of which I've studied quite a bit, there's two, uh, there's often very binary, this is like binary thinking. It's either people on the rise, very young people, or it's people in their 50s and 60s giving advice that's 20 years too old, right? There's a lot of like people going, here's what you have to do. And it's like, babe, you're a 65-year-old millionaire. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. (laughs) 33 looks different than it did when you were 33. Mm-hmm. So it's it's um, hopefully um, made by and for people um, in that age trying to figure out what do I do? What do I want to do with my life? How do I how do I deal with a person I work with that I don't get along with? You know, um, should I? What should I order for lunch? Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the first episode came out today. Yes. So, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. And um, it's Kate Arend and Kim Lessing, who I've been working with for eight, eight and ten years at Paper Kite, and we produce TV and film together, and they're really great producers, and they're really good friends, and they're, they represent what I find to be the norm, not the exception, which is they're two women who help each other and support each other at work. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's roll, Julie. Thank you. 
Do you wake up in a cold sweat from your work dreams? Have a coworker who keeps inviting you to do escape rooms? Can't get a coworker to agree to do escape rooms? Or are you just genuinely not sure how to take the next step in your career? I'm Kate. And I'm Kim. And together we run Amy Poehler's company, Paper Kite Productions. We've been friends and colleagues for years, so we know how important it is to feel like someone has your back at work. And we want to be that for you. So we're hosting a weekly advice show where we answer all your work-related questions. Something amazing happened. I got offered my dream job. How am I supposed to bring this up to him without hurting his feelings? What should I do? I want to like skip the pleasantries without being an hole. Careful, money and friends, they don't mix, babes. They don't. And don't work with your friends and make your friends at work. All right, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but that was actually million dollar advice. <laughs> Whether you need advice or just love to listen to other people's problems, this show is for you. Listen and follow Million Dollar Advice, an Odyssey podcast, available now for free on the Odyssey app and wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, like looks that. great. Cool. So yeah, what you heard what they said. Please subscribe, rate, and review today. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what's the future of podcasting for you? Oh, I have so many ideas. We talk about it all the time. I want to do so many things. I feel like it's such a creative space. Mm -hmm. um, it honestly feels like there's a ton of room uh, for risks and um, creativity. And there is something, I, I would argue that podcasts have replaced a lot of television in terms of the feeling of having the people that you know be in your space, right? We used to watch TV and kind of visit the characters that we like. Mm -hmm. And I think we do that now with podcasts. I think that's how we visit. We want to check in and see how someone is doing. We want to continue to hear the story. There's great storytelling. Um, there's a lot of good comedy. I think there can be even more. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, I think it is, I think it has, it's a, there's, I know I would like to continue to keep making things that I'm a part of, that I can help produce, that I can help curate. There's a ton of people I'd still like to hear from. Mm -hmm. I think there's a whole world of, um, of, um, women like me who listen and who are still trying to find stuff sometimes mm -hmm. that feels like them their voice, uh, it's, it, it's uh, still trying to carve out who, who we're, we're going to, you know, invite into our ears, mm -hmm. but our ears have become like the new couch. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> Hold on, let me work that metaphor out. <laughs> the ears have become the new couch. <laughs> our AirPods, yeah, we'll work on it, but <laughs> workshop. you get it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Don't you feel that way? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's so I mean, I, you all do here because you're all here working in the world. But yeah, it, it feels like there's no, I mean, I, I've absolutely noticed the shift just even from a talent perspective when you're doing promotion mm. that the reach now when you do podcasts is so different than it was even a few years ago. Totally. And I do believe the uh, pandemic um, really cranked it up. <laughs> really did, yeah. It really cranked it up. You know, everyone was digging deep yeah. and going back and saying, you know what, I'm going to give that another listen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if, you know, these eight episodes of um, of uh, How to Bake Bread is going to save me from going insane. <laughs> Yeah, well, I hope that helped someone, the, the episodes sure. of Baking Bread. Myself included. A lot of bread baking. Um, I love bread. Do you think Dr. Sheila will be coming back? Yes, I can't wait for her to come back. And I think, you know, we want her to, we want her to kind of, now it was such a, you were so incredible, Jenna, and continue to be, it's such a steep learning curve. I have, like I said, great respect for the medium, and it is not TV and film, it's completely different thing and it takes a lot of um of quick learning to figure out what works so i think that we've figured out how to edit the show how to make it how to try to make it streamlined so i would love to crank her back up mm -hmm. get that office open again if you will put the <laughs> wig on <laughs> um and uh and get her going again and probably i guess you know 
have video this time. Yeah. That's fun. a big deal. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. People seem happy about that. That sounds so. exciting, right? All right, we'll try to make that happen for you. That sounds good. Um, well, we're going to bring back Matt Marr for a moment. Matt, are you here? Matt? Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm. Uh, Matt, we need I'm, you I'm for over something. here. Where are you? I'm over here. Okay, we're going to need you for something. By the way, I used to be a therapist. I used to have an advice podcast. And Shania Twain is my favorite singer, so I feel attacked. Oh, my God. I'm just You are Dr. Sheila. You are Dr. Sheila. Okay, we're going to do some questions. Um, Actually, we're going to do one question. Um, You get to ask Dr. Sheila one question of advice. Oh. You know what? I'm going to make this real and personal. Okay, Dr. Sheila. Okay. I recently... Hold on, let me get into character. Okay, I'm ready. (laughs) I recently went through a breakup, Mm. a long-term, eight-year relationship Mm. with a man that I'm pretty sure was a narcissist, Mm. but he was good in bed. Mm. Do I go back to him? Well, before we get into the do's and don'ts, which are words I try not to use, um, I'd love for you to tell me a little bit more about this man. Um, he looks like Shamar Moore, mm-hmm. um, but he also didn't have a job. Mm. So there was a lot of, he's got this, he doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. Um, Beautiful smile, um, not eating any emotional intelligence, I don't think, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, he did the dishes. Well, here's what I'll say. I think the term narcissism is thrown around a lot. It's, I've certainly heard it. And <laughs> what, what I would first say is maybe take that off the table because successful, poised, and certain people are, you know, uh, told they're narcissists when in fact they're just very good at their jobs. (laughs) And they're planning ahead. But what I guess I would say is, is there a way where you could accidentally show up at his house for some reason? And perhaps accidentally get a job like his or accidentally start dressing like him. Just finding a way to get very, very uh, close to what he's experiencing and feeling and maybe even peek in his window at times. (laughs) Because uh, not because I want you to stalk him. I think it's more about I want you to see his life, right? There's a curiosity as to what he's doing. So do I want you to get back with him? Again, I don't deal with do's and don'ts. Shall you get back with him? <laughs> you shall, maybe, question mark, Dr. Sheila, question mark. You know, I, I feel like it's more about, it's more about studying him, seeing where he goes, where he drives to, <laughs> keeping tabs on him. Do you know what I mean? Just keeping him close um, and, you know, send, maybe putting letters in his mailbox. I do have good penmanship. That's a good Fantastic. I can feel that from you. Um, so I would start there. I'd start there by getting very, very close and also getting some kind of disguise. <laughs> start there stay close to him, and I think we should do 50 to 100 more sessions <laughs> at $890 an hour. I'll Venmo you. Thank you. Great. Thanks All for right. that question. It's yeah. a vulnerable question. Amazing advice, as always. So thank you, Dr. Sheila, and thank you, Amy. Thank we you, at, Jenna. Um, we're so we at Odyssey are very me. proud of this partnership. And Y'all, thank Jenna Weisberman and Amy Poehler, give them a thank hand. You.